charging high country visitors more to create more affordable housing for the people who live and work there. As students in Denver learn about the housing crisis impacting their hometown. Election rigging claims powered candidates to victory at the Republican State Assembly. And when one didn't win, she suggested, you guessed it, election rigging. Aurora's fired police chief says getting rid of her won't stop the reform she started. So please, still believe in those men and women because they're out there doing it for you right now selflessly. And we have found the next great Denver Nugget. His resume, his home country, even his name look very familiar. All of that is Selenici, Serbian for next. People who live in the mountains are going to see a flurry of new tax proposals in November. They will not be the ones to pay. It'll be all of us who go up to the high country and stay in a hotel or short-term rental. Our Steve Steger looks at an attempt to create more affordable housing there. In the entire county, we've got, I think uh, the last number was 49 houses on the market. There is nothing in Park County that is really affordable. Park County Commissioner Dick Elsner says short-term rentals have pretty much destroyed the housing market in his county. The Sheriff's Department, when we hire deputies, they, are, they can't find a place to live. Uh, Health care, we hire people, they hired a doctor, he couldn't find a house, so they uh, had to hire a different doctor. <laughs> Which is why he's happy about a new state law passed this session. It allows us to put up to a 2% sales tax on lodging on short-term rentals. Counties could do that before. The difference was before any money raised by a lodging tax had to go to fund marketing for tourism in the county. We really didn't feel a need to to spend that money to promote tourism because we have about everything we can do right now with the people that come through. They can now use that lodging tax revenue for things other than just marketing more tourism and promotion. Democratic State Representative Dylan like Roberts from Vail sponsored the change. A place like Eagle County, we calculated between three and four million dollars a year additional. Under the new rule, up to 90 percent of any lodging tax collected could go to things that will improve quality of life for workers and for visitors. So it can go to things like workforce housing or child care or other infrastructure needs that those communities need in order to handle the visitors that are coming. 10 percent would still have to go to tourism promotion. Any county that already has a tax would have to ask voters if they can use the money for new purposes. Any county that wants to add a tax like Park would have to go to the voters. Elsner likes his chances. I think a 2% sales tax on short-term rentals will probably clear with about 80% of the vote. If it gives you an idea how bad this situation is in Park County, the new transit authority running bus service between Park and Summit County had to buy out a hotel in Fair Play to rent the rooms to transit staffers and give them an affordable place to live. Elsner tells me the county estimates there are about 1,500 short-term rental units in that county, Kyle. He says the estimate in Summit County is about 8,000. So obviously we know that taxes incentivize or disincentivize behavior. I can't imagine a scenario where it's like, well, your mountain rental for the weekend is going to cost 2% more. So I'm just, people are just going to stop going to the mountains. Yeah, you know, and that's some of the critics of this brought that up, that if you stop promoting, you're going to find yourself in a situation like Colorado was in 20, 25 years ago where it wasn't really on the map. The difference here is there are a lot of counties that aren't imposing this tax in the first place because they're saying, we don't want to spend this on tourism promotion solely. Now, if they impose this tax, they have to use at least 10% of it to at least promote. So there will be promotion mm -hmm. where there wasn't promotion before. Plus, the state is still doing a lot of that promotion and the big ski companies. Sure. Steve, thank you. Colorado Republicans doubled down on election rigging conspiracy theories at their statewide convention over the weekend. It was win after win for candidates pushing baseless claims that elections are rigged. And when one election denier did not win, she suggested that the GOP assembly was rigged. Indicted Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters easily won the top line for the Secretary of State primary as she faces felony charges for allegedly tampering with voting systems. Republicans' choice for the top line in the governor's race, Greg Lopez, pledged to pardon Peters if he wins and she gets convicted. In the Senate race, it was a dominant victory for State Rep Ron Hanks, who said that he had hoped foreign governments would intervene to keep President Trump in power. Hanks was the only candidate to make the Senate primary ballot out of the assembly. And the assembly crowd cheered a speech by activist Joe Altman, who is repeatedly called for the mass hanging of political opponents for treason. You are a traitor. <laughs> so that's what I sent to uh, Governor Polis. 
gallows. I had to yeah. stretch that rope. <laughs> oh boy. And I want to send the media to the gallows, the mainstream media to the gallows, radical leftists to the gallows, traitors to our nation to the gallows, and they all kind of fit in the same bucket. Election rigging conspiracy theories even boiled over between Republicans. When gubernatorial candidate Danielle Neuschwanger fell short of making the ballot, she confronted the state chair and threatened her with prison. Marshall Zellinger continues our reporting on how Colorado's Republicans are now turning their unproven election fraud claims on each other. We do believe that the election should be rerun um, and that this court should order a special election. This court hearing in Denver is about one vote. One vote that kept Republican State Representative Mary Bradfield from getting enough support at the House District 21 Assembly in El Paso County. One vote that kept her from qualifying for the primary ballot along with Carl Dent, who did get enough support. Can you please tell the court how you voted? I voted for Carl Dent. Republicans in that district want the vote of that delegate, the voice you heard in court. They want to have a Denver district judge invalidate that one vote. They say she should not have been allowed to be a delegate for not appearing in person at a previous meeting. And if she didn't vote, Bradfield would have qualified for the ballot. No new method of voting may be selected by this body. This is a separate issue from what happened this weekend. At the Colorado Republican State Assembly, Danielle Neuschwanger was a candidate for governor who did not get enough support to qualify for the ballot. And she told party chairwoman Christy Burton Brown that the clickers used to vote are to blame. You know what? I'm going to see you in court and I'm going to make sure if you committed any fraud that you are behind bars. A Douglas County delegate shared two videos with us, though neither are examples of trying to vote vote for Neuschwanger or the governor's race. This video supposedly shows an example of an attempt to vote for Secretary of State without the clicker confirming the vote counted. This second video is supposedly showing a vote in the Senate race, which eventually says the word counted. The Republican Party is supposed to be doing an audit of the votes and posting the results online sometime today. We have two issues with the clickers. We have complaints that people who were supposed to be allowed to vote somehow did not have that vote counted. With the court hearing, it's that someone who didn't show up to perhaps one step of the process voted in the next step, and the argument is that she should not have been allowed to vote. Kyle, the party that pushes election integrity is currently having a tough time with election integrity. And one of the issues at the party convention is there a suggestion that they should all vote on paper ballots. And that's now part of what, like the state party platform that in Colorado, Republicans say, let's get rid of um, any kind of like electronic voting, electronic tabulation, that kind of thing. Just go to paper. The people who voted on Saturday, 3,705 total votes were maximum number of votes. So if you had multiple candidates for multiple races and on the off chance that you had to go to multiple ballots, like you didn't get enough, you didn't mm -hmm. get one candidate in one race and you had to vote again. Just picture 3,705 paper ballots and then counting and expecting that result in the same day. And they had to get out of that building by midnight. So there was no change to how you voted by paper. You were doing it electronically in Colorado Springs. And that was a problem for the people who booed immediately. And the majority of the people in that building were booing that they couldn't vote by paper. What a mess. All right. Primary ballots set. On we go. Marshall, thank you. So the candidates to come out of the GOP assembly joined those who petitioned onto the primary ballot. Different path. So in your big races, you get Greg Lopez and Heidi Ganahl for governor, Ron Hanks and Joe O'Day for Senate, Tina Peters and Pam Anderson for Secretary of State. Uh, the only one that's not wild is uh, John Kellner for, on the attorney general ballot. He's alone. But there was an election denier type who made it onto the ballot at the assembly. But then he got booted over questions about whether he was an attorney licensed in Colorado or a Republican. It was a wild weekend. Former police chief Vanessa Wilson in Aurora says that she was fired for cleaning house. She spoke today surrounded by community leaders saying she would refuse to tolerate law enforcement officers committing crimes themselves. In the midst of making reforms, Wilson was fired after pressure from the conservative majority on Aurora City Council. Wilson says that getting rid of her can't stop APD's court ordered reforms. I want to the community to know that this police department right now has men and women out there answering calls for service that took this oath not because of me, but because of what is in their hearts. And the vast majority of the officers of the Aurora Police Department embraced the changes that are coming. Wilson's attorney was there watching today, but the former chief did not say one way or another if she plans to sue over her termination. When you hear people talking about child abuse prevention during the month of April, I hope that so many of you will take pride in what you did to support that effort here in Colorado. Your latest Word of Thanks microgiving campaign raised nearly $30,000 for Ralston House, longtime nonprofit in Jefferson County, where kids who have been abused or witnessed a crime 
go to be interviewed by specialists who can help them tell their story and begin their healing. In a couple of weeks now, we're coming up on your 100th Word of Thanks microgiving campaign. Any ideas for the big 100? We're obviously looking for nonprofits that do wonderful work in our community and could do more of it if they had some additional resources. Email any suggestions to next at 9news.com. I promise you, I read each and every one. Yeah, I saw families, um, I saw moms with kids, you know, people who um, have, you know, like been in the military before. Names and faces of those living on the streets, a lesson for students outside the classroom. This deer is going to be fine, but wildlife workers want to get the word out about what's happening. And we're not messing around when we say we've already found the Nuggets pick in this year's NBA draft. No Jokic. Jovich. Next. People in the Morrison area keep calling wildlife workers about a deer that's having quite an issue. The photos are a little disturbing, poor thing, but Parks and Wildlife says the deer involved in this is going to be fine, and they really would like the public to know what's going on. Colorado Parks and Wildlife says the deer has what's called fibromas. It's a deer papilloma that causes those wart-like tumors. Looks painful, but apparently the deer isn't really affected, and the growth will eventually disappear. CPW was asking us and others to get the word out about this because they've been getting a lot of concerned calls about the deer. CPW says the deer's been observed. It's doing okay. And the virus is of no danger to people. I mean, like, not even if that deer ends up getting hunted and ends up in somebody's dinner eventually. Not a bad way to start Monday. Yes, there were a few clouds and some wind, but temperatures were warm today. 60s and 70s for eastern Colorado, 50s in the high country. It all changes tomorrow. Winds increasing out of the south tonight ahead of a Pacific storm that is spinning to the north and west. Critical fire weather conditions setting up for Tuesday. Red flag warnings, high wind warnings, gusty winds to 60 miles per hour, humidity running 15 to 20 percent. In the high country, it's all about the snow, heavy snow, up to a foot of snow with blowing snow creating difficult travel on Tuesday. Winter storm warnings posted for 8 to 16 inches of snow. Down here only isolated showers tomorrow, a little cooler at 56, dry and cool for Wednesday at 43, mid 50s Thursday and then a warming trend heading into next weekend. Nuggets begin their quest for an NBA title on Saturday night against the Golden State Warriors. And while obviously the focus is on their immediate future, we'll pardon us if we want to look a little bit more long term. To the one name in the NBA draft this summer that should jump out to any Nuggets fan. Nikola Jovic. Not a typo. And I'm not being a joker. Nikola Jovic, an 18-year-old 6'10 forward from Serbia who declared for the draft this morning. A name almost identical to fellow Serb and Nuggets superstar Nikola Jokic. Jokic and Jovic both started in other sports originally. Jovic and water polo. Jokic in horse racing makes the horse look small. They both played for the same pro club in Serbia, KK Mega Basket, which is an awesome name for anything. Pro scouts say Jovic has size, ball handling skill, great passer, sweet shot. Sound familiar? Now he doesn't quite have Jokic's well-rounded physique, but let's get some green chili burritos in him and see what happens. Some people are already calling him the Jover. What we really need is for his name to be called in the NBA draft with the Nuggets on the clock. They're learning about their city up close with one of its most persistent challenges, homelessness. I really enjoyed it, but it was also like a reality check for me because um, seeing how many people were actually downtown like experiencing this makes me like really appreciate what I have in my life. A lesson they graciously opened to us as well. Next. Homelessness has become one of the metro area's most stubborn problems. Some ignore it, others villainize it, some study it. Our Byron Reed went along with some of those folks. So you don't want to, okay. Mm -mm. Friendships can become stronger. We just got like 
closer this year. When classmates share the experience of standing up for change. I was pretty nervous to actually step into the real world and do something this big by myself because you know, we didn't know what we were doing. Litsy Lujan and Sam Garfio are both seniors at Stride Prep Rise in Green Valley Ranch. The two recently took part in one of their school's social justice programs called Intercession Week, a four-day learning experience addressing the issue of people experiencing homelessness. People experiencing homelessness suffer with mental health issues, and I just like taking part in my community and showing my community that I care. It means like our communities will be better the more that our youth are engaged in them and having a voice in, in making the change that they want to see. Alicia Roberts is the school's chief academic officer and a former founding principal. She says the goal of the program is to give her students a voice. There's an underlying um, presence of these issues, whether they are talked about in our communities or not. And so I think it's important that scholars have the language to talk about what they're seeing and or experiencing. The group of 30 students conducted interviews and created a Humans of Denver Instagram page. Their hope is that seeing the stories of people experiencing homelessness will give more teens perspective. Well, we wanted to do something that high school students could feel like they could be a part of. And we know that social media is a big part here for high school students. Both Litzy and Sam think it's important to bring awareness to this issue. Yeah, the more attention it gets, the better. With a common bond of trying to get their message out to make a difference. Once one cares about it and, you know, they can make the people around them care about it. And then, you know, that's how we get closer and closer to making a change. For next. I really wish that more high schools were able to do something like this. I'm Byron Reed. School says intercession week started five years ago and they focus on a number of social justice issues to also include environmental justice and mass incarceration. It's a sign that a piece of old Denver will be sticking around. That plus your feedback on issues from high country housing to political chaos next. It's a sign, a bit of nostalgia in the midst of Denver's development. Barry reached out about the old Cameron Motel sign. That's a cool sign. The motel used to be on Cherry Street near I-25 in Evans. There are luxury apartments that have gone up in its place right now. Motel's long gone, but the sign remains, and Barry was curious whether that means that it is staying permanently. Yes, indeed, that is the plan. Denver's Community Planning and Development Department told us the plan is for the apartment complex, the new place to be called the Cameron. Robbie in Steamboat writes in tonight about Steve Stager's story on diverting tax revenue for more affordable housing in the high country. Robbie says short-term rentals are not the problem in the high country. The price of housing is the problem. Stephen writes in about the election deniers who were so wildly successful at the state Republican Assembly over the weekend. And Stephen says, I don't think people yet realize the true danger we are in. When you think about people who will not accept losing an election. We so often talk about what happens when they lose. We probably should spend more time talking about how our country changes if they win, if we like to have elections and so forth. See you next time.